In a previous episode, I alluded to the fact that we could use extensions on Postgres to unlock all sorts of interesting behavior. Let's mash on that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. I'm Dave Paquette, and today Simon Timms will be talking to us about how to do time series things with Postgres. Yes, I will indeed. So, um, to start with, we mentioned in a previous episode when we were talking about Postgres that you can add all sorts of interesting extensions to Postgres, so GIS, time series, database, um, bunches of stuff out there and that this is a really easy way to unlock some additional functionality without having to bring in like a custom database to your environment and use that. So I think there's even um, cool. event sourcing stuff available for you. Uh, so let's take a look at one of those extensions that we can use up here on Azure. So there is a whole list of extensions that Azure supports. Uh, this is a brand new Azure database for Postgres SQL. I set it up using a flexible server, which is the recommended way to go these days. There are some other approaches, but this is by far the best. Uh, and this is a fairly small database that I just set up and I chose version 14.6. So that is the latest available version of here. Uh, so what you can do is if you want to start using something like time series, you can go over here to server parameters and there's a bunch of different things that you have to enable in here. Uh, so the first one we want to enable is this Azure extensions here. Let me just photo that down. Extensions. Uh, so opening this up, you'll see a list of kind of all the little Postgres add-ons that you can add into this. So I guess this is probably like a bloom filter, um, some fuzzy search. Uh, but we are interested right now in TimeScale DB. So I have was, previously, sorry, go ahead. I was worried. I was worried at first when I saw that drop down because it looked like you could only select one extension at a time. But it looks like <laughs> you can pick as many as you want. Thankfully. Yes, yes, fortunately. So uh, you just go and check this one on to get that running. Uh, and then there's actually a, another one that we need on here. If I can remember where it's called, uh, shared libraries preload here. Uh, and this isn't necessary for all the extensions, but the time series it is. So you can go and check that on here too. Uh, and then once you hit save on this, it's going to go and restart your database to bring time series into it. So this isn't something that you can do live, but I found it restart within a handful of seconds to get everything back up to where it should be. Uh, so time series in particular, which we're looking at here, uh, adds some additional functionality into Postgres. So it allows you to insert time series data. I mean, you can always insert time series data, but this makes it a lot more efficient uh, and unlocks a bunch of new functionality with it. So time series data is like uh, anything that has a time component to it. So readings off of an IoT sensor, uh, stock market information, uh, events within a system even could be looked at as time series data. So it's got a timestamp related to it and then some other associated data related to that time series. Uh, so it's it's a fairly common pattern, I think, within applications. Uh, I'm using it to take readings off of like a drilling rig or something like that. Uh, and the, the advantages are that it makes inserts a little bit more efficient uh, and it unlocks some functionality for doing like windowing functions, so saying like give me all the information between this time and this time and do some summaries on that, uh, rolling averages, uh, those sorts of things. And it also does some compression a little bit differently so that you could store a lot of that time series data in a smaller space than you would if you weren't using the time series extensions. Uh, so with those two added, we can drop over to friendly little PG admin here, which I already have connected up to this database. Uh, so this one caught me a little bit, is that even though we've enabled this thing in two separate places, we also have to run this create extension time scale DB to actually enable the time series functions uh, within the database. Uh, so just to give you an idea of what this is gonna look like here, I'm just gonna start off by creating a table. Uh, so this table is, Oh, the backstory to this table is that we have a greenhouse, a large greenhouse, and every one of our plants in that greenhouse has some sort of IoT sensor on it. So it's sensing temperature and humidity for all the plants within the greenhouse. 
uh, and we're receiving those readings on a say hourly basis and we want to insert that data into our database so we'll just go and create this table here uh, so it's going to create this table so this is still just a basic postgres table that exists just as any other table would so we can go and take a look at that uh, perhaps over here except it doesn't want to scroll very well let's see hmm. well it seems it's zooming in doesn't work very well with this so i just have to take my word that underneath sequences is the word tables uh, so the next thing we want to do is we want to enable this database or this table for time series so we're gonna just do this create hyper table which I mean, how cool is that uh, on this table cool. yeah and then we're gonna use time this field called time is our time series on it so we'll go and do that okay so that is enabled uh, and then I just have a query here that's going to go and insert a bunch of data into that table here so it's just going to be some random data that's going to go in there uh, and then we can take a look at that data that comes out here and that has in fact inserted a bunch of records and a bunch of times in there uh, so that's really kind of all I wanted to go through here just how to enable this and get it going uh, in our next episode we're going to take a little bit more of a look at how to use this data and how to unlock some of these time series functions and then we'll roll that into the c -sharp application that we built earlier using this that's great thanks simon now you have me thinking about iot enabling my greenhouse mm -hmm. you do have a see if i can manage to do that yeah, yeah. Uh, right. i always remember somebody that i worked with had a chicken coop had a problem with a fox getting into it and so was building like a camera system on the outside to monitor whether it was a fox or a chicken coming into the coop and unlock a door based on that so i think the readings that he got off of that could have been inserted into a time series database too it's topical around here because now i'm allowed to keep chickens according to the city uh, not that i will probably be doing that but anyway, we are getting off topic here. So remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on the next episode. Bye.